Hi, my name is Dylan Hudson. I work in the security services department for tech data as a penetration tester. I've been working in red team operations or offensive for multiple years. However, prior, I worked in many security operations centers working to defend networks. Uh, some of the things I've run into during these penetration tests is uh, some misunderstanding on what the difference actually is between a vulnerability assessment and a penetration test. And I'd like to sort of clear up that fog today with this presentation, as well as a demo showing at a high level the processes that take place during these types of tests. So let's get started. I'm sharing my screen and I'm gonna go through a couple of slides before we go into the demo. So first I'd like to go over the high level terms that we're gonna be learning. So we got vulnerability assessment and penetration test. First, let's read the definition of a vulnerability assessment. So it is the process of identifying and quantifying security vulnerabilities in an environment. It is an in-depth evaluation of your information security posture, indicating weaknesses, as well as providing the appropriate mitigation procedures required to either eliminate those weaknesses or reduce them to an acceptable risk level. So before I move to the definition of a penetration test, let's break that down into a, like a house analogy. So let's say you're at your house or apartment or wherever you're living and you hire someone to consult with you and help you understand where there are gaps in your house. Maybe the deadbolt is weak or isn't installed correctly. Uh, the pins in the lock are, uh, maybe it's only a three pin instead of a five pin or your windows are unlocked consistently. This is sort of a vulnerability assessment where the person's consulting with you, they're helping you understand uh, potential risks that could be posed by having those things there. Um, however, no sort of break-in or exploitation takes place. This is where a penetration test differs. So it is an authorized simulated cyber attack on a computer system performed to evaluate the security of the system. So again, let's take that out of the cybersecurity perspective and go back to the house analogy. This would be like that same consultant saying, okay, so now that these procedures have taken place, we've consulted with you, we've helped you understand where the vulnerabilities are. Let's actually see if we can break in. Um, because even if the vulnerabilities were fixed, there may still be issues where one could break in. For example, maybe they could pick the lock, um, which would bypass that security. Uh, maybe more, more secure pins or added security to that door needs to take place. So now that you understand at a high level with a house, let's take that into the IT perspective again. So let's go back to the vulnerability assessment. Let's say I'm looking on a network, I've conducted my scans and I find that there are credentials in plain text on a web server. I would tell the customer, hey, these are the risks. So these are the issues that can happen. An attacker could take these credentials, log into other systems if they're active and pivot within your network into other systems. So I'd be telling that to the customer. However, if it were a penetration test and I found those same things, I would actually take those credentials and try to log into those systems and then actually move laterally and report it instead of show them, hey, you know, if I, was a, if I was a hacker, these are the systems I could see, these are the systems I can access, and this is where I can get on your network with those sort of credentials. So it's actually the exploitation part is the critical part between a vulnerability assessment and a penetration test. So let's go into the high level flow of a vulnerability assessment. So you understand the definition now? Let's break it down into parts. So first we have information gathering, enumeration, revealing exposures, and then reporting. So information gathering. This is our initial scans uh, with, I'm just gonna be naming tools here. There's no specific ones or ones that I feel are better than others. These are just tools that I've used personally. Uh, so you could use tools like Nessus, Nmap or Network Map or OpenVos to get your initial information gathering. Uh, maybe this could also involve uh, OSINT as well. So looking on tools like Shodan or Abuse IP DB to understand some of the information on the IPs provided from the customer. Um, so information gathering and enumeration kind of tie into each other because once you're done with that open source intelligence or your initial port scans, uh, you'd then go into that enumeration. So you'd be looking at uh, the reports that you took from OpenVos and Nessus, uh, looking at the services that were discovered and seeing if there's any vulnerabilities associated with those. Uh, once you see those vulnerabilities from those reports, you then reveal your exposures. So you're examining the common vulnerabilities and exposures or CVEs as well as the common weaknesses enumerations or CWEs that can typically be found by these scans. Um, this would then be the consultant's job to look at that and say, okay, well, some of these vulnerabilities aren't as bad as the others. So these are the most critical, you should fix these first. And that will all be put in, again, the next step reporting. So delivering it to the customer, again, determining that risk, typically it's on uh, low, medium, high and critical. Uh, critical being the things you want to fix immediately and low being the things that are still an issue but can wait. Um, there's no immediate threat. Uh, so typically, this can be some sort of configuration sometimes as well as maybe um, 
SSL certificates are out of date or using an older version. Um, this can be some of the lower things, while a critical thing could be an actual commonly exploited CVE um, or CWE that's within some of the software or uh, systems that are scanned during the vulnerability assessment. Now let's go into the flow of a penetration test. So again, you're going to see a lot of the similar stuff that was in the vulnerability assessment just now is in the form of a penetration test. So again, similar things. You got information gathering, enumeration, and reporting. However, as I stated, that one thing that sticks out is exploitation. So again, you're doing the same stuff, information gathering, using your open source intelligence, again, tools like Shodan and uh, OpenVos. Enumeration, looking at those scans. However, here's the different part, exploitation. This is where I'm actually using the data from those scans and going to be exploiting it or attempting to exploit it against these systems to see if I can get access, to see if I can make my own users on these systems or get a reverse connection so that I can actually remote control it from my system. Uh, and then finally, similar to the last time you're reporting. So I'm showing what did I do when the exploit was ran? When was the exploit ran? Uh, was it successful? Did I have to modify the exploit at all for it to work? Uh, and again, also showing what the risks are if that's run, because if I'm able to exploit a system, I may be able to pivot or move to other systems on the network and also exploit them. Um, and this is, again, that main difference between a penetration test and a vulnerability assessment is the exploitation portion. So now that you understand at a high level what the difference is between a penetration test and a vulnerability assessment, let's get into the types of penetration tests. So you have black box, gray box, and white box. So black box testing. Well, this is where the least amount of information is given to the tester, uh, maybe only the company name, and then they have to do all the research, they have to uh, create an attack plan, and this is the most real world simulation you're going to get. Uh, this is as if an actual hacker was trying to get into a network. Um, similar to the house analogy, this would be like just giving the consultant your home address and nothing else. Um, gray box testing. Uh, this is a mix between the black box and the white box tests. Uh, this can sometimes be used to understand internal threats as typically some sort of employee credentials or sometimes admin credentials are given. But in general, a little more information is given to the tester. So uh, instead of no information, they're getting uh, a lot more. They're getting, like I said, credentials. Um, they could be getting a little bit of a network layout. But the goal is to give some information, but not all. Um, this is good as I stated, for an internal threat, because employees typically don't have all the access unless they're um, at the top level or in the C-suite. For example, a CISO would have some high level access while um, a standard employee may not. Um, and finally, we have white box testing. Uh, this is the fastest sort of testing. That's because the penetration testers or um, the consultant is given the most information possible. They can be given network layout, credentials, um, Again, the company name is, is typically always provided, but this is given pretty much any information possible to the tester to go after. Um, this, again, is the quickest form of testing. However, it doesn't exactly always provide them a good understanding of what would actually happen if uh, a threat actor, like a nation state or um, just hackers in general, actually attempted to get into their network. Um, this is... Uh, again, more full transparency and clarity is given to the tester, but it's not very close to real world. So now that we got the understanding of what types of penetration tests are, uh, as well as the difference between a vulnerability assessment and a penetration test, let's get into a quick demo so that I can show live what these differences are and going through those steps that I said earlier with information gathering, enumeration, uh, revealing exposures and reporting, as well as exploitation, uh, and actually show what that looks like in real time. So let's get into this demo. I'm gonna be showing the differences between a penetration test and a vulnerability assessment. What I'm gonna be doing this with is a vulnerable machine that I have set up on my network called Metasploitable2. This was found off vulnhub.com. The intention of the machine is just to be easily accessible via exploitation, um, but you're supposed to be able to use a tool called Metasploit, which is a good framework for uh, running exploit code as well as scanners. Uh, it's just a tool that's within Kali Linux. Um, Kali Linux is an operating system created by Offensive Security. Uh, it's used by a lot of security researchers. It has just prepackaged exploit tools that people can use. Uh, it's, simply, it's simple to import into a uh, virtualization software and it's easy to use and packaged. Um, some of the tools you're gonna be seeing are OpenVos, which I mentioned during the presentation, and as well as Nmap. Uh, and finally, Metasploit to actually be conducting the exploitation phase of the demo. 
Uh, so let's go into the vulnerability assessment portion. So let's say I'm conducting a vulnerability assessment. So my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get what's in scope. So I'm going to use a command called echo. I wrote to a variable, the target that we're going to be attacking. So this is the target, this 192.168.56.24 address. This is the IP address of the Metasploitable 2 machine. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do my uh, information gathering and also my enumeration phase with the tool called nmap. So I'm going to do nmap. Uh, I'm going to do an SV for service version. So any of the ports that it finds open, it's going to tell me the service version associated with it. I'm then going to do a IP address here. So this is, again, that IP we're actually going to be targeting. And then verbose with a V. And this is just going to give us some more information uh, as well as how long the scan is actually going to take. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to start. And while this is running, prior to doing this, I ran an open VOS scan actually on the host. So let's open that up while Nmap is running on the side here. So open VOS is again that vulnerability assessment tool. Uh, it can tell you CVEs that might be on a host as well as some vulnerabilities that it detects. Um, so I'll, again, this is running on the side. We're going to take a look at this PDF and then go back to that scan. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be focusing on or the exploit I'm going to be running against this machine is going to be on port 21 or FTP. So let's take a look. So again, I'm going to be doing the vulnerability assessment phase here. So I have my scans running uh, and I'm going to take a look. So this is the FTP vulnerability. Uh, it has a very high score. So these CVSS scores are rated from 1 to 10. And so let's see what we got here. We got a VS FTPD, which is just a service, compromised source packages backdoor vulnerability. So on this package of VS FTPD, it appears that there is a backdoor installed by threat actors to allow a hacker to execute arbitrary commands or meaning um, they can run commands on the system that they're not supposed to be able to, for example, getting a reverse connection back or um, uh, doing malicious things on the device that they shouldn't be able to. So this is pretty risky. Um, if this was vulnerability assessment like a real one, I would tell the customer, you know, along with the other things that are on here that are pretty high, this needs to be fixed. These are the risks that can be associated, as I just stated, um, and why it's important to be fixed. And that's just sort of the high level steps of the vulnerability assessment. It's, I, I, it's a lot more complex than what I've shown here. But um, in terms of the high level, it's again, looking at the vulnerabilities that are found uh, and then as well as the services to determine uh, the issues that might be on the device. So now let's simulate a penetration test. So I'm gonna move our OpenVOS scan over here and let's take a look at some of the data we have. So it's reporting here in the affected software that it's the VSFTPD 2.3.4 source package. So let's keep this in mind, this VSFTPD 2.3.4 and let's look at our Nmap scan. So it looks like it has the same exact data. We see on port 21, it's running FTP or file transfer protocol, and it's running the version of VS FTPD 2.3.4, which is the same thing we see in our report here. Okay, so we have two, two pieces of data here that correlate as the same exact thing. Let's see if we can get a third and we can confirm that this is actually a vulnerability that might be on the system and that may have some code we can use to exploit it. So I'm gonna use a tool called Searchsploit which is a database that search for public exploits that have proof of concepts, or again, that can use to exploit it. And I'm gonna search for that exact service. So VSFTPD, two dot, and then we'll take a look. And we ha have some for some older versions, but this is the one that sticks out to me. This VSFTPD 2.3.4 backdoor command execution. And this is the same sort of wording that is also in this OpenVOS report. So I think it's fair to say that this vulnerability affects the system that we're looking at. So I'm gonna run a tool called MSF console, which is Metasploit, uh, which is a framework for running exploits, uh, creating payloads, uh, as well as its main function is running exploits against systems. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna search for this vulnerability within Metasploit. So let's do search VSFTPD. So we find the same exploit here and we see in the description, it says 2.3.4 backdoor command execution, the same thing here. And we're going to use it by doing use and then zero, which is the number associated with the exploit here, hit enter. So now we're using that exploit based on 
what I see here in my terminal. Now I'm going to do options to show what I need to set in this to actually run it effectively. And I need to set the R hosts because it's empty. The R port is correct because we already saw an nmap that is running on port 21. So let's set the R host to our target, which is the IP address associated with the Metasploitable 2 machine, the original scan that we did in the beginning. And let's hit enter. And now we'll run options again to confirm that the change was made. Yep, and we can see here that the Metasploitable 2 machine is now our target. So now that we have that set, let's run the exploit. So it's going to show some information that's actually on the exploit uh, on what's going on. And as we can see here, we actually found a shell. Uh, so we can see a command shell session opened with the IP address we were targeting uh, on this port. So now let's prove that we're actually on the Metasploitable 2 machine. And we're going to do this with the tool called ifconfig. And we can see now that when I run this command, I see the IP here. This indicates that we're actually on this machine, but let's get some further proof. Let's look at the file that's in here. This Etsy host name cat just shows the contents of the file. So let's run it. And we can see here that we are now on the Metasploitable machine. Um, so one thing I want to do, the last thing is we now have exploited the machine. Now what I would do is I try to escalate my privileges to something that has a higher level. Uh, as you can see here, we're already running as root. So this is the highest level of privilege, but that's not always the case when all exploits are ran. But I'm going to show you with the command here, who am I? that I am root, so I have highest level access. Um, however, again, uh, sometimes you get lower level access, sometimes it's user credentials or uh, certain exploits only give you access to the web server user, which is typically www data, which has less permissions than the root user who is the top level user of a Linux system. Uh, with the Windows system, this would typically be, uh, the top level user would be system, and uh, the a normal user would just be like your, your own name, uh, like when you log into your work, workstation at home. Um, and then as usual, with the same thing with the vulnerability assessment, I would report this to the customer. I had explained the risks, the things that took place, the exploit used, and um, show what was actually conducted during the penetration test. Thank you for joining me for this demo, as well as the presentation. I hope you understand now the differences between a vulnerability assessment and a penetration test, as well as the types of penetration tests. If you'd like to reach me and the team, you can contact us at security services at techdata.com. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.